The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan of TheMorganReport.com for the week ending 10 February 2023. Well, first up is a Reuters article. Headline says it all. Gold set for third weekly fall on dollar strength. Hawkish Fed worries. Fed's in charge, right? Well, somewhat. And as they continue to increase interest rates, this is supposed to put a damper on gold, which it does from the knee-jerk short-term perspective, but from a longer perspective, it really doesn't matter unless it gets well above the inflation rate, which I doubt they're going to be able to hike rates to their purportedly 6% inflation. So time will tell. I do think there are more rate hikes coming. And my take is different than most of my peers, and that is that uh, Fed may just keep hiking until something breaks. I don't think it's deliberate, but it could be. A little more in line with my thinking, this is on CNBC. Wayne Gordon of UBS Global Wealth Management said that he expects gold to break 2,000 level by the end of 2023. I concur. In fact, I think it could go to 22, but we'll see. The U.S. dollar is showing signs of weakness now, and gold will continue to be, quote-unquote, a very good hedge against weakness in the greenback. Probably worth reading the whole article. It's short, as you can see. And investing.com is a place you might want to bookmark. All right, I'm going to move to silver already, and the first up is from Science Daily. This one's close to my heart because I've thought about this many times. It's the first time I've seen it in print. In a study of nearly 3,000 school children, silver diatomite fluoride, a liquid that's brushed onto the surface of teeth to prevent cavities or keep them from worsening, was as effective against cavities as dental sealants, the standard of care. A single dose of either topical treatment given in elementary schools prevented roughly 80% of the cavities and kept 50% of the cavities from worsening when children were seen two years later. I've often thought, what would it be like if we had colloidal silver in the water supply instead of fluoride? Something to ponder. And this is from Proactive Investors out of the UK. Silver is growing application in energy transition and automation of the automobile industry as it shifts to electric vehicles will enhance silver's strategic role in the global economy going forward. The silver market is finally balanced until 2027 when it starts moving into large deficits again as supply tapers off and industrial demand continues to grow. And that's a rough estimate. It could be sooner than that. Uh, certainly, we had a large deficit last year, according to the Silver Institute. And finally, silver is the essential component in many industries, including electrical switches, solar panels, chemical producing catalysts, and nearly anything electrical or electronic. So, Longer term, it's very bullish. Short term, it could sell off some more. It's a very interesting story, especially what I've gone through in the last almost 50 years. Talks here about the RFID or RIFID requirement, photovoltaics installation, everything else. You can read the article. All right. Well, continuing on the silver story, back to PV Magazine, which we feature often on the Weekly Perspective. Global solar installations may hit 350.6 gigawatts in 2023, says Trend Force. What's interesting here is looking at this graph. If you look at uh, 2021 and you see the amount used for every, uh, and of course this changes because of the efficiency or what they call thrifting, meaning less silver per unit of uh, electrical production. Uh, but that's been thrifted quite a bit. In other words, there isn't a lot of room to move to take out more silver and get the same amount of uh, electrical power out. So if you go back and research, it wouldn't take you long to find out that back in 2020, that uh, the amount of silver used is about 10% of the total silver market. So 100 million round numbers versus a billion ounces with the, both mining and recycling. So if you look at 2020 here, uh, that was 139.6. We're estimated to be at 350. So move up. We'll just say 100 million ounces there for 164. Double that, you'd be at uh, 330. We're supposedly 350 is the estimate. So you're looking at basically 100 million ounces of silver again. So that would be 20% of the silver market because the overall silver market will be approximately what it's been for several years in a row. And that's round numbers of billion ounces. 
850 coming from mining with 150 coming from recycling. So if you go back and look at some of these early articles, uh, one wasn't that long ago, a couple of years ago, from uh, Metals Focus saying, no, solar's on the way out. Uh, out to 2024, we see volume drifting lower, said Philip Newman, founding partner of research group Metals Focus. So, and I'm not saying much good or bad. I'm just saying, you know, for the record, that's what he said at that time. His view today, I don't know. I haven't spoken with him in a long time. But we're looking at more and more use in solar, and I think that trend is going to continue. I'm going to end this week with... Uh, this from the Financial Times, you can probably find it and play the video. Recycling the world's hard drive waste. <clears throat> Financial Times rethinks. Shredding hard drives may be a surefire way to prevent data links from discarded devices. But as Financial Times TNT corresponded and a gross reports, it can create significant amounts of waste and squander rare metals. Well, most of you are familiar with the Enviro Leach environmental story that I've been telling for a very long time, and there are ways to extract e-waste economically. So there's that. I'm going to leave it here. I'll be back with you next week with another weekly perspective from the Morgan Report. This is David Morgan signing out.